Okay, let's talk about something slightly humorous, shall we? There was an article that was written, okay? What can you do about the trumpets next door? Now, this is one of those um, fake derogatory terms that they think bothers Trump supporters. And this is, <laughs> this is where things get really interesting. So they take a picture of somebody shoveling a massive amount of snow from a driveway, okay? Oh, heck no. The Trumpites next door to our pandemic getaway, who seem as devoted to the ex-president as you can get without being Q fans, just plowed our driveway without being asked and did a great job. Yeah, it's because Trump supporters are good people. How am I going to resist demands for unity in the face of this act of aggressive niceness? Of course, on some level, I realize I owe them thanks, and man, it really looks like the guy backdragged the driveway like a pro, but how much thanks? Now, you have to understand, like, I'm sitting, I'm looking at this, this is, guys, what is that, three feet of snow? For those of you on the, the live stream, on DLive, it looks like about three feet of snow. And there's a guy with a snow shovel in his arms, shoveling the driveway. So they can get into their getaway house, which is bigger than any house that, that I've ever lived in for a long period of time. Hmm. What a pile of garbage this guy is for shoveling out her driveway. Didn't ask. You know, he just did it. He saw his neighbor's driveway was snowed in, and out of the kindness of his heart, he went over, and he shoveled it, and cleared it out, and did a fantastic job. And all this columnist, Virginia Heffernan, all this columnist can think of is how conflicted she is at the idea of having to be nice to a Trump supporter who did something nice for her. Okay. These neighbors are staunch partisans of blue lives. Oh, they, they, God forbid you like police officers. And there aren't a lot of anything other than white lives in the neighborhood. <laughs> this is also kind of weird. Back in the city, people don't sweep other people's walkways for nothing. Yeah, but again, Trump supporters are good people. Actually, a lot of people... Um, if you're not in a extremely liberal place, we'll take care of your your driveway for you if, if you need to. A lot of people do that. Um, my neighbor and I routinely bring each other's garbage cans in. Tiny little thing. Not a big deal. It's just one of those things. Or if it's sitting out there and, and you know that they're working a weird schedule, hey, bring it in. Maybe it's like what Eddie Murphy discovered in that old Saturday Night Live sketch, White Like Me. He goes, uh, he goes undercover in white makeup and finds that when, when white people are among their own, they pop free champagne and live the high life. Right. Okay. So anyway, uh, Byron York, who is great, by the way. These folks who think that they are better than others because of how they voted being conflicted when those they are allegedly better than do something nice for them. Remind us again who the real bleepity people are. We constantly hear about how mean Trump supporters are, but gosh, golly and gee, reading this column for Virginia Heffernan, it sure is starting to sound like Biden supporters are the real bleep holes out there. In case you missed it, Virginia was upset because her Trump-supporting neighbor shoveled her driveway. She went so far as to make herself the victim of this kind deed, writing a column about it. And yes, everything is stupid. Byron York took her to task in his own exceptional thread. Dilemma for writer Virginia Heffernan. When it snows at her pandemic getaway, helpful neighbors plow her driveway unbidden, do a great job... What a nice thing. They don't do this in the city. Only problem is neighbors support Trump. One out of ten. And then he goes on on a, uh, a ten tweet storm rampage destroying this woman. Think of how insane you are if you're upset by this. If you're upset by your neighbor doing a neighborly thing simply because of their politics, I got news for you. You're the bad guy. They're not. 
And that probably means that you support policies and politicians who are the bad guys, too. Got more coming up. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's news channel. This is Michiana. Bay's Electric Studios. From the first step to the final phase, industrial and commercial electrical done right. This is Casey Hendrickson. That's a lot of jet fuel just to do a little flyover. That's your hard-earned money and your tax dollars at work. That stuff ain't happening with Kamala Biden ticket. And I'll tell you that right now, partner. Weird. Uh, because... That was October of, of 2020. And that is Troy Aikman, and that is Joe Buck, telling us that waste of taxpayer dollars for the flyover over a game would not happen in a Kamala Joe Biden administration. I always have to remind everybody of uh, the name placement on that. And, I, you know, I'm scrolling through Facebook yesterday. I did not watch a, a single minute of the game. But I am going through my, my Facebook feed in the middle of a break yesterday from, from my other work. And there is one of one of the, the people who's on my Facebook feed taking a picture. They're in Florida. And the three bombers are flying over their house on their way to the Super Bowl. And they took a picture of it. Great picture, by the way, whomever you are. I don't remember who it was. Um, and I, all I could think to myself is, hold on a second, we were told that there wouldn't be any more wasteful flyovers in a Kamala Harris-Biden administration. And yet we had a really expensive one that just happened at, at the Super Bowl. Now, I will, again, I'm being a snarky jerk here, but I just I have to remind everybody that we were told that this wasn't going to happen anymore, and yet it did. I mean, that was the one executive action that, that Biden forgot. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, for the record, as we explained in great painstaking detail back in October, these are not wastes of taxpayer dollars. They're, in fact, critical training missions. Um, and these training missions are used for a whole host of things from uh, not just the, the pilots and planning and logistics and refueling and all of that. But, I mean, there's there's a whole myriad of things that go into this. They are extremely important training missions to the average layman civilian who's sitting in their, their seat, their beer-soaked seat. When they look up, they're just like, wow, that's a lot of money for three seconds of airplane, but it's still cool. Yeah, there was a lot that went into that because it was an actual training mission. It's, it's not a waste of taxpayer dollars. This is something that the military has debunked for a long, long, long time. Unfortunately, you still have brain-dead amoebas out there who don't know anything about the military who still run into these things, and they're only outraged uh, when the circumstance allows it. Now, what ended up happening is Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, I actually tweeted details on the training mission specifically for the one that Joe Buck and Troy Aikman were critical of and why it was important um, that were released by the, uh, the Air Force. I actually tweeted that to him. I never got a response. But they were trying to say there was, well, the stadiums are empty. And so it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. It's still not a waste of taxpayer dollars. They could be flying over your kid's soccer game when it's being rained out. It's still not a waste of taxpayer dollars. It is a critical mission training. Uh, well, it, critical, it's critical mission training with objectives that are very important for the overall performance of, of our military. It's... It's really not a waste of taxpayer dollars. It doesn't matter what they're flying over. It's, it's not a waste of taxpayer dollars at all. But I just wanted to remind everybody, because I posted about this on social media yesterday, and a bunch of people were like, I forgot about that. And like, see, it, it just, we were told that there wouldn't be any more wasteful flyovers, that it wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, it's not a waste, ladies and gentlemen, because it's the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl's different. No, it's not. By the way, this is a, uh, actually a very, very detailed uh, training mission involving these three bombers that, that flew over the Super Bowl yesterday. Um, there was actually a bunch of articles written about everything that went into it, why it was important, and that sort of thing. Of course, everybody just ignores that part. They just look up. But I had to point out, <laughs> had to point out, if I were still on Twitter, I would have tagged both of them in that post, but I am not on Twitter, so I was not able to tag all of them in it. But if you want to go to my Facebook, facebook.com slash Casey the host, and take my post and then tag Troy Aikman 
and Joe Buck in in that post on Twitter. If you have a Twitter, that would be great because they're both active on Twitter more than any other platform. And uh, just harass them. That would be uh, that would be funny. But we were told it wouldn't happen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word what a what a world we live in ladies and gentlemen but there is this really interesting um tidbit here that we have got we have got to talk about pelosi i know you don't want to but folks we have to we have to talk about pelosi uh, now i don't have an update from today so if there is an update let me know pelosi fined two Republicans over the metal detectors. Okay? So Pelosi, basically, if you bypass the metal detectors, remember this became a big thing with Representative uh, Boebert from Colorado. She's the one that wants to carry her Glock in the Capitol. And clearly what happened at the Capitol proves that you should probably be armed if you have the ability to be armed. But anyway, uh, she doesn't you know, want to go through the metal detector and, and all of that stuff because now they've forbidden uh, firearms from the Capitol building. So House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, reportedly docked $5,000 each from two Republican congressmen's pay for allegedly defying her metal detector rule. Now, the metal detector is a new thing that they've just installed. So Representative Gomert, Louis Gomert from Texas, and Andrew Clyde from Georgia are the first to be hit with a $5,000 fine, which is taken directly from their $174,000 salaries. I'll throw this up there for you. Uh, live stream viewers so you can see the article okay another offense will cost ten thousand dollars under the policy that was imposed in january by pelosi and then ratified by the house this week so your first offense is five grand your next offense is ten grand and so on and so forth in a statement friday <clears throat> gomert addressed the accusation that he broke the house rule regarding metal detectors saying this should be this should come as no surprise but democrats are making up the rules as they go all right. He also has been calling Pelosi's um, you know, policy here as unconstitutional for, for many, many weeks. And there is some debate about her ability to actually find people and whether or not that's real. I, who knows? But they're letting her do it. OK, now here's the thing. Here's the thing that gets so interesting about this. If you are supposed to because some of you are out there going look the, the rules are the rules even if they're stupid and if you don't go through the metal detector and you knew there's a five thousand dollar fine for not going through the metal detector then obviously you can't get upset that there was a fine when you didn't go through the metal detector because you were warned right there's some of you out there i have no doubt that are thinking the exact same thing some of you who hate my guts who are, are liberals are probably saying that to yourself right now all right nancy pelosi didn't go through the metal detector though she violated her own rule Right. So now there's a bunch of people in Congress who are demanding that Nancy Pelosi pay the same $5,000 fine that she's requiring other members of the House to pay for not going through the metal detector. What do you think the odds are that she's going to do that, by the way? Now, if she has done it, I, I haven't heard about it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. She made the rule. The House ratified the rule, right? Two members of Congress, Republicans, get a $5,000 fine automatically deducted from their salary. Nancy Pelosi breaks her own rule, doesn't go through the metal detectors as is required. And so now you've got members of Congress demanding that she pay the fine that she installed. But what do you think the chances are that she's actually going to pay that? I remain very skeptical that Nancy Pelosi is going to abide by her own rules. Now, again, this is the same person who routinely tells you to do something and then doesn't do it herself. Uh, latest examples, obviously, are the, the salon situation in San Francisco. You're not allowed to leave your house. You're not allowed to go to the hair salon. You're not allowed to be in the hair salon without your mask on. She violated all of those rules. And then she said it was a setup and she was ambushed as if she didn't know the rules of her own city. Right. Sure you didn't. Okay. But uh, here she is once again violating the rules that she wants everybody else to follow. And I'm assuming at some point we'll hear from her if she ever gets pressed on this by the media 
I'm assuming that she will pass blame on somebody else, just like she passed blame on her refusing to follow the rules in San Francisco when she went to that hair salon and violated all of the local mask ordinances and everything else. And she said, it wasn't my fault. It was somebody else's fault. They set me up. Well, had you followed the rules, it wouldn't have been a setup. Really that easy. Not, not that hard. But I'm willing to bet. Willing to bet. She's going to blame somebody else. She's going to blame somebody else. <clears throat> oh, somebody dropped a gummy bear. I was just picking up the gummy bear for them, and I just accidentally walked around the metal detector. I wouldn't be surprised if Nancy Pelosi is strapped, to be perfectly honest with you. I would not be surprised. Doesn't want anybody around her strapped, but she's probably strapped because that's how, that's how anti-gun leftists roll. Anti-gun leftists are always the ones that end up getting caught in the news committing gun crimes. Have you ever noticed that? And we talked about the... Uh, the group that Pete Buttigieg used to belong to, uh, Mayors uh, Against Guns, I mean, Mayors Against, uh, uh, was it, uh, I don't know, Mayors Against Guns something or other, whatever. They changed their name. They, they morphed into that other group now. But they had to change their name because several members actually were convicted of gun crimes. And these are Mayors Against, oh, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, that's what it was. And really it was just a position, anything that isn't a handgun with with six bullets max was basically against the law is essentially well illegal should be illegal that was their position and they had several of their members get arrested and convicted for gun crimes these are mayors by the way you know politicians so i wouldn't be surprised if nancy pelosi is strapped to the hilt obviously she has her arm security but i wouldn't be surprised she's got a little gat on her somewhere wouldn't be surprised at all all right folks just keep an eye on the story. Let's see if anybody pays attention to this and see if anybody actually asks her if she's going to pay the fine for the rule that she installed when she's fining other members of, of the House. We'll see what actually happens here. Got more coming up. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's news channel. I could do a lot of stories like this, for the record. I, I'm just not today. I'm going to pepper them out throughout the week. Uh, one of uh, Biden's appointees, his pick for the unemployment program, and, and I'm, I'm not making this miss up, but it's just, you have to understand, this is a real issue. Uh, before we get into this, unemployment fraud is a big problem in the United States. A lot of people get benefits who don't qualify for benefits, uh, that sort of thing. So unemployment fraud is an issue that we have been well aware of for some time and hasn't really been fixed or addressed in, in some time. But the person that Biden picked for the unemployment program lost $600 million to Nigerian scammers. <clears throat> President Biden faces growing questions about the appointment of a Democratic donor to oversee billions of dollars in unemployment benefits despite her role as a state agency that lost hundreds of millions in coronavirus relief funds to Nigerian scammers. Susie Levine departed Washington State's Employment Security Department last month, leaving behind a trail of audits and questions about how $600 million of unemployment funds could be siphoned off by cyber criminals. This week, she took up a post as Acting Assistant Secretary at the Employment and Training Administration within the Labor Department. The position puts her at the forefront of Biden's coronavirus recovery plan and provoked an immediate wave of criticism. Washington residents who have had uh, who have seen massive error after massive error from Levine's Employment Security Department are dumbfounded that she would be getting a promotion, said Representative Jaime Herrera Bueller, uh, Bootler, excuse me, of Washington State. <laughs> it's only six hundred million dollars in your money. I mean, you know, hey, it's what's six hundred million dollars among friends and Nigerian princes and. And that sort of thing. So, yeah, she lost $600 million. Uh, or, okay, let me correct myself here. Let me just back up. She, air quote, lost, air quote, lost $600 million to Nigerian scammers. Air quote. And I am just assuming it's not in an offshore bank account in her name somewhere. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just assuming that. But I could be wrong. 
So I want to make that crystal clear. So she loses $600 million, and she immediately gets a job in the Biden administration. And the thing is, is uh, you have to understand something. There is a long... You remember when everybody in the Trump administration, every appointee was just critically scrutinized by the news media? There is a laundry list of very questionable people who have been appointed in Usurper Joe's administration. And there is no scrutiny. There's no articles. There's no mass outrage. How could this person be in the federal government? There's none of that. Jen Psaki, for crying out loud, okay, used homophobic slurs on people. And there's no questioning it whatsoever, which is amazing. But <laughs> you've got... Uh, you've got somebody who gets $800,000 in speaking fees from a hedge fund who has a very controversial history in government herself. You've got uh, this person here lost $600 million to Nigerian scammers, mm -hmm, allegedly. It just, it boggles the mind 